Hello, my name is Gabriela Andrea Martinez, and today I will be presenting my AP Statistics Semester 2 project. Within Unit 4, I proposed the idea that I would track baseball players in their average hitting of miles per hour, with and without music in their ears. And within Unit 6, I plan to make sure that all of my subjects were able to do the project and were fully aware of the entire project so I could perform a two-sample t-test to see whether or not the boys responded differently, better or worse with music within their ears, opposed to not having the music in at all. This is a re retrospective observational study. In this, I was able to reduce bias by setting the same baseball team using the same equipment, tracking the exit velocity opposed to thrown balls, and equally giving all the players breaks within their periods of time. The variables that I would use would be the sp speed of the ball exiting the bat off of a tee in miles per hour, and the song, and the key of the song, and how much difference there is. This led to my research question. To what extent does workout music influence athletic ability based on baseball athletes in the Fresno Valley's batting scores? Well, the inspiration for this project was because of 2021 and how insanely impacted it has been with COVID. It shut down many sports and school activities, and it allowed me to see how many kids were hurt from the pandemic through sports and how, how many kids had to overfocus on their training once they had to start practicing for college ball. I saw TikTok and music also impacting a lot of kids during the isolation period, and I started to get curious of whether or not music could play an important part in training. This is where I started to think whether or not baseball players could be studied with and without their preferred music choice. Therefore, these are the first steps that I took in the project. Before collecting the data, I surveyed many baseball players. The baseball coach gave me the approval to conduct the study, and he told me to use a radar gun, random subjects that he would give me, a tee and bat, which are wooden, balls, AirPods, and a lot more. He also made sure that all the players had time and were the same ability so that there would be no big gaps between players to avoid outliers within the data. I also separated their music and made sure that I wrote down the keys of the music next to each song that I distributed. And I collected all this data for around a month. To start off, I started collecting data from baseball players that had music within their ears. Each of the boys gave me playlists and each of the songs was written on the left, and all of their scores were written on the right. Therefore, I had 150 amounts of data. As you can see here, here are the average scores on the right-hand column of each of the songs for each player. Next, I had a normal graph of those baseball players playing while having music in their ears as well. As you can see, there's also data scores with the baseball players without music in their ears. And also on the right hand side was the averages for the miles per hour. As you can see, with both of the graphs, each subject was on the left, and the five scores per song on with, with the graph before was shown, and now with this one, there's no music, so here are the averages. Here's also a normal graph of those baseball players playing while having music out of their ears. Next... We are going to perform what is known as the two-sample t-test. Here you can see the formula that is usually used to find the t-statistic. It is shown with both of the means being subtracted from each other, divided by the square root of the standard deviation squared over the n-score, plus the standard deviation of the second values over the n-score of the second set of values. So therefore, I had two sets of values, clearly. But the first thing that we had to do was find conditions for the study and see if they were approved. Here are conditions and assumptions for this. The first one was independent assumptions. This is the data, and it shows that the data is independent of each other clearly because both were recorded independently with and without music, especially on different days. 
There was also the randomization condition, and this showed that both data were recorded at a formal pace, but the subjects used to get the data were randomly selected out of a pool of kids who were in the same skill range, high school baseball players. Also, the normal distribution condition applied as well. Both data sets were normally distributed and were shown on a graph to not have any outliers, especially above. The 10% condition showed that this data is definitely not more than 10% of the population because both values take from 30 scores and 10 boys. And clearly, there are not only 100 high school baseball players within the valley. There is a lot more. Second, we went on to the hypothesis. We declared the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis stated that the scores from the baseball players who are listening to the music will have the same, will be the same as the scores from the baseball players who are not listening to the music. There's also the alternative hypothesis, which states the scores from the baseball players who are listening to music will not be the same as the scores from the baseball players who are not listening to music. From here, we are going to start because the conditions are satisfied and there is sufficient evidence to figure out the t-statistic. So in order to find the t-statistic and p-value, we have to go back to the formula that we viewed before. And in order to do this, we need to make sure we have the mean, the standard deviation, and the number of scores. We are going to find the t-statistic by subtracting mean a from mean b, then dividing this by the square root of standard deviation a squared, divided by n a, plus standard deviation of b squared, divided by the n of b. Here within this graph, in this image, you can see the hard data that was used to figure out the t-statistic. Eventually, the t-statistic narrowed down to 2.6862. After figuring out that the t statistic was 2.6862, we had to make sure that we also declared the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom turned out to be 29, which was the number of scores minus 1, and this is 29. From here, we calculated the p-value, and it calculated to 0 0.011834. Seeing that the p-value is so small in comparison to the significance level, which was originally 0 0.05, we can come to the conclusion to reject the null hypothesis and assume that the alternative hypothesis is true. This means that we have enough evidence to suggest that there is clearly a difference between those listening to music while batting and when they are not listening to it. Therefore, the two-sample t-statistic analysis clearly showed that there was a significant difference between those baseball players who are listening to music and those who were not while batting. This is because when a t-score was analyzed from two sets of data, one of baseball players with music in their ears and one without, there was a t-score of 2.6862, and this calculated to a p-value of 0 0.011834, which showed that the null hypothesis was to be rejected. This was because when the baseball players were exposed to the music within their ears, they were able to clearly concentrate or work their hormones up high enough to do better within their performance. Taking a closer look at the other data and analyzing both sets of data from a different perspective, it is clear that with the music, it did not only create a difference in their score, but in fact increased their scores to a very high degree. Therefore, this is a clear way to infer that there is a lot more experimenting to occur in the future. This data suggests that scientists should clearly look into this topic and see how there's a lot of people who are affected by music, especially in sports, such as this baseball team. But within this project, there were clearly a lot of obstacles. Some obstacles that I encountered during the project would definitely be having to round up a bunch of baseball players for this project. It was difficult to get them and make them do the project for me. They did not give me enough playlists and songs at first, so it was hard to make sure that they were put in a playlist before practice. They also did not have enough patience to take time between their swings and mechanics such as this. The way I resolved this was making sure that I was keeping track of all my players and making sure that it was constantly okay to do this at the baseball range. I also made sure that I was affirmative and stern with the boys who I was coaching and having swing and hit for. Finally, some possible extensions that could derive from this would definitely be how there are a lot of baseball players and athletes who need to be exposed to all of these different kinds of music. 
What is super interesting and important is that there are so many kids who listen to music during workouts, but they're not sure which ones affect them in the right manner. Therefore, it would be interesting to see what kinds of music affect them better than others. This implies that there should be more students and more studies done, obviously. The same subject in different sports and bigger sample sizes, but more importantly, other genres of music should be studied to see if there's a difference present or not. Thank you.